Hey everyone, it's Keto Live season again. So coming up in June in a few weeks time in the wonderful Burgoon, Switzerland, incredible place, is Keto Live 2023. And last year I got a bunch of videos done for my good friend, Josephine Barbarino, who runs the whole Keto Conference. It's packed with experts, doctors, professors, metabolic health specialists, all explaining how keto and low carb interventions can quite dramatically in many cases mitigate uh, modern chronic diseases of all sorts. So this interview is with Dr. David Unwin, who's always there like myself, and if we go through a quick chat around his talk last year and what it entailed. So really nice conversation. And the links are down below if you wish to attend the best keto low carb conference in the world in the most beautiful place. And I've checked and the tickets actually to Zurich, which is only two hours from the conference by train, are still remarkably cheap, even with only a few weeks to go. So fantastic holiday there. Get to hear all the experts and mingle with them and mix with them in the hotel because it's the most intimate kind of conference I've ever been at. Truly exceptional. But in any case, let's go ahead and hear Dr. David Unwin. Coming to you here from Keto Live 2022, the best conference on low carbon keto in resolving chronic disease. And we're here in beautiful Burgoon, Switzerland. And I have met one of my heroes, Dr. David Unwin. You're very kind, you're very kind. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, I remember the first time we met Possibly, no, it was. I think it was in the PHC in London in the General Practitioner. It was, it was in the Royal College. Royal College. Yes. And we had a really good chat with Sam Feltham. And of course, we were both riffing about GGT because we yes. had both kind of come into this years yep. ago yep. with yep. the liver enzyme. But we won't retrace that ground because we want to do these short videos and with each speaker, you know, get out some of the content of the talk you're giving and the key points. Yes. What struck me, yes, or was it yesterday? I think it was, was the patient example. So yeah. we, we'll get in a minute to your your overall percentage yeah. uh, performance. But I think Dan, was Dan one of the yeah, cool Dan, guys? Yeah, Dan, what I was trying to show is what an ordinary bloke can achieve. So Dan uh, is 40 years old. He presented with really very high blood sugars. So his hemoglobin A1C, for those interested in that, was over 90, which is sky high, sky high. And mm -hmm. we know uh, that for anybody with a very high hemoglobin A1C, they're losing about a third of their life expectancy. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to do something about that. And in Dan's case, he was really hoping to avoid lifelong medication. Mm -hmm. I offered him the choice, clearly we've got to do something. Um, but he, he decided to, uh, he wanted to try the low carb approach, so he gave up sugar and starchy carbs. And very rapidly, he, he got actually normal blood sugars. So he, get, he went from really uh, very poorly controlled diabetes down to normal, and he's maintained normal blood sugars for over two years now. And, and the before and afters are amazing, because you saw he was quite a big bloke. Then he looks like a teenager. Uh, and also his, his, he came off all his blood pressure medication. So he ended up, he went from being a patient to just being well and normal and he doesn't need doctors, he's fine. He needs follow up from time to time. So he's a, he's a poster boy really uh, for what you, what you can do in, in primary care um, with all the constraints that we have. Very, very proud of Dan. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, he's a real exemplar. But the thing is, yes, he's almost an extreme version of success, but broadly across the whole population, there's incredible success. I think you've kind of, you're around half the cost of, of your region's practices. Yeah. So I think that's the other thing, is, is if, if time after time, you give patients the alternative of lifelong medication or changing their lifestyle, and if, it, it, in actually, in every case where I've offered patients that alternative, they've chosen to change their diet. Mm. So that means that I'm beginning to save, and it's, we're up to £68,000 per year now for an NHS practice on the drugs for diabetes alone. So it's not, you know, if you add in, we're also saving money on 
antihypertensives or actually antidepressants and various other things. But if we just stick to drugs for diabetes, we are saving £68,000 per year on the drugs budget. And, and uh, that's nationally collected data, so it's not data that I've collected, it's, it's nationally uh, collected. Now, I suppose the, the, the show-off point is that Dan is one case, um, and uh, the, the relevance to that is I hadn't seen type 2 diabetes remission drug-free type 2 diabetes remission, not a single time in 25 years as a doctor, as a GP. And now I have seen it in 117 occasions. So Dan is one of 117 cases. Mm. And that translates, if you, if you look at the practice as a whole, because we've got data on everybody, it translates into, I think it's 52%. So of those who chose, choose low carb, you, you, there's over a 50% chance that you're going to get remission at Norwood Avenue. But then people say, well, you know, yes, but what about all the rest? And how, how many choose low carb? So another way to look at it is we've now got 20% of the whole diabetic register for the practice into remission. So that's it's a fifth of everybody with diabetes, type 2 diabetes at Norwood Avenue is now in remission and not using drugs and other practices are achieving similar things and that's what I've come here to show off really <laughs> and try and encourage other people to give it a go and, and, and think about how you might implement that in your own practice and there are other doctors here from all over the world learning is fantastic. Yeah absolutely and doing that and you had a kind of road to Damascus I think originally like you say 25 years you were tired of medicine because you really didn't make much of an improvement there was no magic and nope. then you discovered just actually tell us that one briefly you went okay. on the diabetes forum and you kind of got thrown off seen as the I enemy. did I did I was intrigued because I knew that uh, large numbers of the public were achieving good results so I went on the uh, on the forum the low carb forum of diabetes.co.uk the first thing that was astonishing was there were 40,000 people there intelligent people trying to help each other and then there was the very sad thing their efforts were being rubbished by healthcare professionals like me and that I was so sad because I thought well actually they're, they're doing really good stuff but then the hilarious thing was um, at that point so this is 2012 2012 at that point they hadn't really had a friendly healthcare professional not a single one so that when they found me poking about I was suspended as a troll you know, and in those days, I had no idea what a troll was, and my kids thought that was really hilarious that I was suspended. <laughs> and they investigated me. I mean, fair dues. Mm. They actually came to the practice to find out, was I a troll, was I genuine or whatever? And that started the beginning of a really helpful relationship because we start, I was cross at the beginning, how dare they investigate the senior partner? Uh, and then by the end, they were so sincere and mm. achieving good stuff. Uh, I thought, no, I'm going to help. So Thanks. that's the, that's the story, really. Oh, it's a great story, and I remember I remember interviewing you before somewhere. I think it was in the Parliament. I think there was some function we're at in yeah, the yeah. Parliament where a scene was or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, absolutely, and and that's it. And the people, just as you mentioned that, my wife has come to quite a few low carb conferences. Now five kids at home, the yeah. occasional one, but she's always been struck by these people are so nice. How are they so nice at? Uh, and I, I just said, that's the way the low I, carb I, movement is. Yeah, I agree. And that's what people find. The warmth and the companionship is great. It's just mm. great. It's quite unlike other types of conference. And really interesting people. To, the, the networking here uh, is, is, that's really, I'm talking to people all over the world. I'm learning lots. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, it's superb, and I would—I won't ask you to put you on the spot on camera, but I've been saying in these interviews, and I honestly believe it, Keto Live, what Josephine has built here, when you add in all the workshops, the education of medical professionals, the, yeah. the rotas that are planned for the coming years, uh, the CME credits, the online learning system, and that's the thing, the CME credits, 
uh, doctors can get them and I think she mentioned that some doctors are not sure they'll be able to just by watching videos but she's developed a whole training system online that's accredited to give these credits yeah. with tests. It's so that there are M uh, uh, MCQs afterwards so that you can demonstrate you did actually listen yeah, exactly. and it's important that you did actually learn something. Oh absolutely so yeah that, because I, you don't want like doctors just kind of playing the video in the background yeah. while they watch Netflix. That yeah. wouldn't happen. But no, this is the real deal. And I think Keto Live and this whole infrastructure, it's way more than just a conference, uh, although it is a beautiful place to have a conference. It's the quality of the people. And I love the way, rather than low carb, with all kinds of woo coming in occasionally with the speakers, everyone is very motivated, professional, targeted, and overwhelmingly has clinical experience, as well as all the research they've yeah. done. It's I think the, the common theme for me is the people I'm meeting are passionate about improving the world, yes. mainly rather than making money, uh, and that's that's what I like. They're they're people, and each of them, it's nearly always comes from from some personal story, and that that, that uh, something happens, and they suddenly really understand how important this is, and how maybe people are suffering unnecessarily, mm -hmm. and then you come to right, what can I do about it? And that's what I'm hearing. Actually, I just go up to people and say, what's your story? And they've, uh, nobody has not had some sort of road to Damascus like mine. And I think that's where the sincerity comes from. And there's also a sort of acceptance and an open-mindedness so that people don't judge straight away. They're sort of open-minded for a bit with the word maybe. I think you have to do that sort of, well, this is interesting, maybe. And then yeah. the, there's plenty of opportunity for questions, which is what I like as well. So they never mm -hmm. finish without time for questions. That was good, actually. I, I noticed that they're, they're prepared to go over the schedule a bit, but it feels so homely and not too formal yeah. here. They go over the schedule. The next speaker doesn't mind and, you know, move out the lunch and everyone's fine with it. Yeah. it it's good. I think that's because they allow quite a good long lunch break mm. so that you don't have to get tense. Because sometimes when I'm presenting, I know so you get a feel of the crowd and if they're really interested you think oh I should just go on a bit longer but here you can because Josephine can pull it back because there's an hour and a half at lunchtime so you don't have to be too tense about anything because if it's going well the question she's allowing it to develop yeah. and I quite like that without the guillotine having to she's mm. doing it quite gently without too much shouting yeah no it's excellent now it's a, it's, a, it's a great case uh, study and doing conferences properly and I've got to call out Stefan, her husband, who does a lot of organization he behind does. the scenes. Can't forget that. He's a kind guy. Yeah, organized. Perfectly uh, beautiful people. So excellent, David. And uh, we'll catch up again at the well. next one. <laughs> Thanks, Ivan. Bye, Dale. Bye-bye now. I'm sure you'll agree Dr. Unwin is the best. And just a reminder, as I mentioned at the start, the links are down below, not only to a discounted uh, attendance for this year's Keto Live 2023 in Burgoon, Switzerland, but also links to recordings and CME accredited courses from the prior ones. So you can get a discount today uh, to attend this year's conference and it's going to be fantastic as always.